welcome and thank you for letting me come into your home to share in this Chris Tingle service. Now some of you might not know what a Chris Tingle is and it's a kind of a craft thing we do but it has meaning. It tells something of the Christmas story and for it you'll need some bits and pieces. Now we did tell folk what, we, what they needed before uh, through Facebook so I hope you have all your bits. Well, let's just run through them again. What you're going to need is an orange, a bit of ribbon that can go around the middle of our orange, so it needs to be quite long. Red is best if you have it, but if you don't have red, it doesn't matter, it could be any kind of ribbon. It's the going round that's important. You will also need some cocktail sticks, because they're in the Christmas story. Well, no they're not. But what they are going to do is we're going to use some sweets and put them on the cocktail sticks and put them into our Chris Tingle. So you need some sweets, preferably soft ones. Peanuts do not fit on cocktail sticks at all well, so they need to be soft and squishy. <clears throat> and you might need a little help getting them on, but you can, you can check that out at your end. You will need a candle. And all of these things come together to make our Chris Tingle. Now we will have a few options and I'll explain these as we make it. But if you have these things ready, then we can start making our Chris Tingle. But before we get going, it might be quite nice to hear a Christmas carol. So we have one for you, and if you know the words, join in. They will appear on the screen. If you know it, do sing up. We're going to join, see him lying in a bed of straw. See him lying on a bed of straw, a drafty stable with an open door. Mary cradling the babe she bore, the Prince of Glory is his name. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man. Just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. Star of silver sweep across the sky, show where Jesus in the manger lies. Shepherds, quickly from your stupor rise to see the Savior of the world. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man. Just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. Angels sing again the song you sang, bring God's glory to the heart of man. Sing that Bethlehem's little baby can be salvation to the soul. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man. Just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. Mine are riches from your poverty, from your innocence eternity. Mine forgiveness by your death for me, child of sorrow for my joy. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man. Just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. Just as poor as was the stable van, the Prince of Glory when he came. Well done. Hope you enjoyed that. Would you mind if I prayed for you? And you could join in if you want. Uh, but if not, just give me a moment. I would like to pray for you and your family. Heavenly Father, as we come together to share something of the story of Christmas through sign and through symbol. We pray that you will bless us and our families, keeping us safe, keeping us wrapped up in your love, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, we said the Chris Tingle is about Christmas and a symbol of Christmas. So let's hear again a bit of the Christmas story. This is a bit from the opening chapters of Luke. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire, a big list of everybody. This was the first census when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone had to travel to their own hometown to be counted. So Joseph went from Galilee, a town in Nazareth, up to Bethlehem, which is in Judah. And that was David's town, because Joseph was a descendant of David, and he had to go there to be counted. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn son. She wrapped him up in a blanket and put him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn where they were staying. And a manger is a kind of a, a basket that you put animal feed in. Now there were shepherds camping in the neighbourhood. They set night watches over their sheep to make sure they were safe. And suddenly God's angel stood among them and God's glory blazed around them like a bright light. And they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to tell you good news. Great and joyful thing has happened that everybody is going to benefit from and everybody needs to hear about. The Saviour has just been born in David's town. A Saviour who is Messiah and Master. This is what you have to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge host of other angels, all singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. When the angels left and went back into heaven, the shepherds talked about what they had seen. Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can, they said, and see for ourselves what God has done. And they left, running and stumbling through the fields, and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing, and they told everyone they met what the angel had said about this child. And all who heard it were so impressed and amazed by the shepherd's story. Mary kept all these things to herself and she held them dear to her, deep in her heart. The shepherds went back and they let loose. They were glorifying God and they were praising God and they were dancing in the streets and they told everyone what they had seen and heard and it had turned out exactly just the way they had been told. Well, that's a bit of the story of Christmas, the first Christmas, and now we're going to start to make our Christingle. So we're going to need the orange. Why an orange? Well, the orange for a Christingle is a symbol. It means it stands for something, and it's a symbol of the world in which we live. And it's something we should be grateful for and mindful for and about all the time. Because if the world wasn't here, well, neither would we be. So we have our orange that stands for the world. Now, we're going to have a candle and we're going to put these sweets into our world. But some of us will have different bits and pieces, so we'll look at these bits as we go along. But if you've not got a little candle like mine, I've got a, a birthday candle and a holder, and you're going to use... A big candle like this one what you might need to do now is get a grown-up to get a sharp knife and in one end push the knife in a couple of centimeters take it out and turn it and push it in again 
to make a kind of a cross shape on the top. And if you do that, your big candle would squeeze in much easier. And if you take a little bit of foil, like kitchen foil, and wrap the bottom, it's going to be crinkly, like a little holder, when you push it in, it means all the wax won't run into your orange. But that's if you've got a big candle. If you're like me and you're doing the easy thing, use a birthday candle with a holder. It's much more straightforward. But anyway, let's get back to our making. We have our orange that stands for the world, that gives us everything we need, and that we live on it. And it's a good thing. But with it being round, it can roll about which might make it a bit tricky to work on. So, if you've had to put a cross in it for your candle, if you get someone grown up with a sharp knife, to just very cut a very thin bit of the skin off the other side, it can make it flat. And that will help it just to not roll about. So that's a little trick that I learned after having chased oranges all over the church, which is not helpful. So there's a little, a little hint and a tip. So that's our world ready. Let's hear another carol. And again, if you know it, join in. The words will be on the screen. This one's Mary's boy child. The very one that we heard the story about. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king is born today. And man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, they see a bright new shining star. They hear a choir sing, the music seems to come from afar. Now Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem that night. They find no place to born she child, not a single room was inside. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king is born today. And man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. By and by they find a little nook in a stable all forlorn. And in a manger cold and dark, Mary's little boy was born. A long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king is born today. And man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say. That man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. That man will live forevermore, because
stars of Christmas Day. Well, I hope you enjoyed that carol. I did. It's a nice one. We Christians believe that God loves the world so much and everything in it so much. And as a symbol of his love for us, we take the ribbon, in this case my red ribbon, and we put it around the middle of the world. Now we know that our world around the middle has what we call the equator. But this is a different kind of equator. This is God's loving equator. And what we can do is, I'm going to cheat, because you can either tape it on, but I have a pin. And I'm going to put the pin in to hold the ribbon in place. So we have our world surrounded, wrapped in God's love. God's love that is there for everyone. In Corinthians, that's a book in the Bible, we hear that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And the Bible tells us that God loves the world so much that he sent Jesus that in that first Christmas into the world to be our saviour. Someone who can join us back with God. It says this, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not die, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its saviour. Well, that's good news, and that's great news. And we say that Jesus is the light of the world. In fact, Jesus said that himself when he was grown up. In, in John chapter 9, he says, I am the light of the world. And this is where our candle comes in. We take our candle. And this candle represents Jesus. The light of the world. God's light that's come into the world. So if you've had to put a cross on the top, that's where you push your candle in. Or if you've got a candle on a holder, you do it like that. Stick it in the top. So Jesus, the light of the world, has come into the world. And it's always going to be with us. Funnily, a birthday candle, like a birthday cake candle, is actually quite a good symbol because it reminds us that Christmas is about Jesus' birthday, that first Christmas. And every year we celebrate it. It's a good thing to use a birthday candle. Now I wonder what it must have been like way back at that first Christmas. I wonder how people heard and what people thought. Well, there's a story I have of someone who was there and wanted to find out what all this fuss was about. And it happens to be a little video, so I'm going to play that now and I hope you enjoy it. A long time ago, in a town called Bethlehem, there lived a cheese-eating, mystery-solving, Mouse. Where is all that racket coming from? Grumbled Mouse. Then he spotted new noisy neighbours. Some had sticks and looked quite hairy. Some had gifts and looked quite clever. And there was a mum and a dad and a noisy human baby. Ouch! I definitely didn't agree to such a noisy neighbour. Oh. Yikes! Squeaked Mouse. Sorry I startled you, little rat. I'm Donkey. I am not a rat. I am a cheese-eating, mystery-solving mouse. Oh, I do beg your pardon, said Donkey. Well, Donkey, there's a mystery to solve. Who are my new neighbours? And who is the noisy one that everyone is staring at? Donkey told Mouse about his adventure with Mary and Joseph, how they clipped and clopped from Nazareth to Bethlehem. On the way, they said Manuel will be born. Manuel? It's a strange name for a baby, thought Mouse. Donkey said that upstairs was full, and that's why baby was born downstairs 
and placed in the feeding trough. And that's when the ones with sticks and the ones with gifts came to visit. But why? Do they think the baby's special? I don't know, said Donkey. But sheep will. Sheep knows everything there is to know about the ones with sticks. The shepherds. With a clip and a clop, they trekked up a hill and met a grass munching sheep. Hello, sheep. What can you tell us about the shepherds? Basically, it all started the other night, said the sheep. An angel shone in the sky and the ones with sticks went all wobbly with shock. The angel told us, no need to get all wobbly. Jump for joy, because a baby has been born who will rescue God's people. Hmm, interesting. Loads more angels appeared in the sky and the shepherds went to find the baby. But what about the ones with gifts, sheep? I don't know, said sheep. But Camel will. If we leave now, we can still catch her. Hello, Camel. I believe wise men met my rather noisy neighbour. <sighs> Do you know why? Well, we followed a star a really long way just to meet the baby one. It stopped outside your house and the wise men gave... Cheese? Interrupted Mouse. Don't be silly. Gold, frankincense and myrrh. Three gifts fit for a king. Aha! That must mean Baby is a king. But I didn't spot a crown on his head. Well, the wise men said that someone special from Bethlehem will take charge of God's people. Back at Mouse's house, Mary and Joseph held the now not-so-noisy neighbour. Camel says Baby is king, Sheep says Baby is rescuer, and Donkey says Baby is Manuel. Wait! said Donkey. On the journey, Mary and Joseph didn't say Manuel. They said Emmanuel. It means God is with us. Their soon-to-be-born baby boy was somehow going to be God too. Wow, you really are something special. Your rescuer, King and Emmanuel. God is with us. Now, if only I could solve the mystery of your name. Look, Joseph. Our little Jesus has got another visitor, said Mary. Jesus! Oh, I'm so glad I met you. I don't have a gift fit for a king, but what I do have, I want to give you. You're a kind mouse, said Donkey. Today, I'm the mouse who shared a room with Jesus, the greatest one who ever lived, the rescuer, the king and Emmanuel. God is with us. Wasn't that good? A good bit of the story. It just reminds us of the whole story of Jesus' birth. Now we're going to sing another carol. And I think this one you really well know. And you're going to sing it really well. So all the grown-ups who are there, they might end up with a tear in their eye because you'll sing it so beautifully. Away in a manger.
Well done. I'm sure that was beautiful singing. Now back to our Chris Stingle. We're almost done. We're almost there. But we still have these cocktail sticks. Well, these don't have a part to play in the story other than, as we said earlier, to hold our sweets. Now our sweets stand for all the good things on God's earth. Now you might need help. You might need a, a grown-up to help push them on because they don't want you to jag your finger. So we put on two or three or four or as many as you want on your Christingle. Now if you don't want sweets, you can use dried fruit or raisins or whatever you like, whatever you enjoy, and put them on. And what we do is we just pop that in. So we have God's world full of good things for us to enjoy, surrounded by his love and with Jesus as the light at the very top of it. So you might want to do one each for everybody in your house so that everybody in your home on Christmas Day can have one of these cocktail sticks with sweets on it that they will enjoy and it will remind us all of the Christmas story. So I'm using marshmallows mainly because I don't like marshmallows and that's the only reason why our cupboard's got marshmallows in it because if I liked them they probably would have been eaten by now but I'm not so keen on marshmallows so we have some there so we have our orange the world wrapped in God's love with Jesus as its light and that world is full of good things that we enjoy so if you've got that done good job if it's still a bit wobbly, one of the grown-ups can maybe stick a couple of cocktail sticks in at the bottom, like legs, to stop it rolling over. But if you've trimmed the bottom, it should be just about perfect. We have this world, covered in good things, surrounded in God's love, and with Jesus, the light of the world. And what you can do with this is I'll make this for Christmas Day and put it on your table for you when you're having your Christmas meal and you can light the candle and as we look at it we are reminded of how much God loves each and every one of us again can I ask you to let me pray for you and your family if you want to join in that's great but I want to say a Christmas prayer for you all let us pray Father God we thank you for your world that's so full of good things that we enjoy. We thank you for Jesus, the light of the world that has come in and even in the darkness, we still see its light. We thank you for your love that surrounds us, even when we don't see it. 
we know that there are places on your world that you love so much where there are wars and, and young people and children who are really having a hard time and they won't have a good Christmas. So we pray for them. We remember them and ask that your love would be with them, especially at the, on these difficult days that they face. We think of our own homes and our own families and we pray that the light of Jesus would shine brightly in our homes, in our families, teaching us about your love that surrounds us and giving us more good things to enjoy in our lives. May this be a really precious Christmas, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good prayer. Well done. I've got one more carol song to sing. Now, you might know this. It's a bit newer. But if you do it, it's maybe one that you can bounce around to because it's a good fun one. Come and join the celebration. Come and join the celebration, it's a very special day. Come and share our jubilation, there's a new king born today. See the shepherds hurry down to Bethlehem, gaze in wonder at the Son of God who lay before them. special day. Come and share our jubilation. There's a new king born today. Wise men journey, led to worship by a star. Kneel in homage, bringing precious gifts from lands afar. So come and join the celebration. It's a very special day. Come and share our jubilation. There's a new king born today. God is with us. Round the world the message bring. He is with us. Welcome all the bells on earth are pealing. Come and join the celebration. It's a very special day. Come and share a jubilation there's a new king born today there's a new king born today there's a new king born today well i hope you've enjoyed our little chris Tingle service before you go i'm going to light mine so you can see it And I hope you get a chance to make your own and enjoy the good stuff on it. I hope you too have a wonderful Christmas. Even though this Christmas is going to be a bit different, a bit unusual. May God's peace, may God's love fill your hearts, fill your homes. From all of us in Caled Kirk to all of you who are watching. Happy Christmas for Christ. The light of the world has come, and that's something worth celebrating.